Hello everyone and thank you for watching this video about our paper called Efficient Multi-Word Compare and Swap. My name is Igor Zablotsky and this is joint work with my advisor Rashid Gerawi and with Alex Kogan and Virendra Marate from Oracle Labs. In a nutshell, our work is about a multi-word compare and swap algorithm which is nearly optimal with respect to the number of compare and swap instructions used. Let's start with a brief overview of multi-word compare and swap, or MCAS for short. MCAS is a generalization of the well-known and widely used compare and swap primitive for shared memory. MCAS takes a list of addresses, a list of expected values, and a list of new values. It compares the addresses to their respective uh, expected values, and if all of them match, MCAS atomically installs new values in each address. If, however, one or more of the addresses do not match their expected values, then MCAS does nothing. So no address is modified. Now, MCAS is a very useful tool to have because it allows us to atomically and conditionally update multiple words, uh, even if these words are non-contiguous in memory. This has the potential to consider considerably simplify uh, complex algorithms, for instance, implementations of log-free data structures. So as an example, take a double linked list. In, in such a list, um, inserting a node or removing a node requires you to change at least two pointers atomically. Of course, there are techniques to do this using single word compare and swap, but having MCAS available makes this task significantly simpler. Another great example is our B trees. So in a B tree, inserting a new entry can cause a multi-level split. And this requires also requires changing several pointers in an atomic way. And, uh, and as before, MCAS has the, has the potential to uh, make this task much simpler. Now, this power of MCAS does not come for free, of course. Existing hardware architectures do not provide MCAS natively, and therefore we need to implement MCAS at the software level. Existing software implementations of MCAS are typically based on single word compare and swap, and they make heavy use of, uh, of compare and swap. So more precisely, existing implementations use between 2K plus one and 6K plus two compare and swap instructions for a single uh, for a k word MCAS in the common uncontended case. Of course, if there is contention, the complexity can grow even higher due to restarts or helping. Another characteristic of existing implementations of MCAS is that read-only operations often have to write to shared memory even if there is no contention. This is an undesirable property because prior work has shown that reading, uh, that writing during read-only operations limits scalability. Now, CAS is an expensive instruction and it can take up to hundreds of cycles to execute, which begs the natural question, what is the minimal number of, of CASs required to implement multi-word compare and This is the question that we address in our paper and we do so through a series of contributions. Our first contribution is an MCAS algorithm for volatile memory, which is very efficient. Our algorithm uses only K plus one CASes for a K word MCAS in the common uncontended case. Our algorithm has the additional desirable property that the readers do not write to shared memory when there is no contention. Our second contribution is to extend our algorithm to work with persistent memory. This extension has the same low complexity as before, K plus one CASes, and it additionally requires only two persistent fences for a K word MCAS. Um, this is much lower than the state of the art, which requires two K plus one um, persistent fences for, for every K call to K word MCAS. Finally, our last contribution is to show that our previous algorithms are uh, nearly optimal with respect to the number of compare and swap instructions used. So we show that 
uh, you need at least k component swaps for a k word MCAS if your implementation is log free and this joint tax is parallel. And note how close this lower bound is to the complexity of our algorithms. In this talk, I would, I would like to focus on the first contribution and for the other two contributions, I invite you to uh, check out our paper. So for the rest of the talk, my goal is to give you the intuition behind our efficient MCAS design. Let's start with a bit of background. Uh, existing implementations all revolve around what we can call an operation descriptor. So this is a structure that resides in memory and the structure contains all of the information required to complete a given MCAS operation, either by the initiating thread or by um, a potential helping thread. In, so so this, the descriptor will contain, of course, the, um, the, all of the addresses and uh, new and expected values, and it can additionally contain implementation dependent data. Most implementations have a status field. So the status field indicates whether the operation has completed, and if so, whether it was successful or whether it has failed, or if the, or if the operation is still ongoing. Now, let's see how this descriptor is used in existing MCAS constructions. So these constructions proceed in phases. The first phase, I call the locking phase. So in this phase, we go through the addresses and we attempt to uh, replace their current value with a pointer towards the descriptor whose status is still ongoing. Now, the name locking may be slightly misleading in fact, I only consider log-free algorithms, so there are no actual logs, but you can think of this, of, uh, this phase as locking or acquiring these addresses by the descriptor. The second phase is a status change phase. So in this phase, um, we change the status of inside the descriptor from ongoing to either successful or failed. Let's consider an example where all of the addresses have matched their expected values and therefore we change the status to successful. A third phase is the unlocking phase. So in this phase, um, we detach the descriptor from the addresses and install final values inside each address. So uh, in this example, the operation was uh, successful and therefore we will install new values in each address. If the operation had failed, then we would have installed old values in each address. And finally, the fourth phase is the reclamation phase. In this phase, we reclaim the memory of, of the descriptor for future reuse. Now in existing constructions, the first three paths, the, the first three phases are on the critical path, meaning that all three phases are executed before returning from a given MCAS operation. And the reclamation phase is done off the critical path in the background. Our insight in this work is that we can shrink the critical path by taking the unlocking phase off critical path and doing the unlocking in the background. So this may sound very simple, but of course care has to be taken to ensure correctness with this new behavior of returning early. Let's see a bit more details about that. So in our algorithm, like I said, um, MCAS operations return immediately after the status change um, phase. And this means that later operations will encounter um, this configuration in which we have addresses that are acquired by a final ID descriptor. So let's see how these how operations react this situation. A read operation, uh, let's consider a read that uh, is concerned with A1. So we want to read from A1 and A1 points to the descriptor that is finalized as successful. Well, we can simply return the new value from inside the descriptor. And similarly, if, if the descriptor had been uh, failed, then we could have returned the old value or the expected value from um, inside the descriptor. So that was, th those were reads. Now for MCAS, for an MCAS operation that encounters this configuration, uh, let's consider an MCAS that is concerned with A1. 
So MCAS will see that A1 contains a pointer to a uh, finalized descriptor and can swing the pointer directly to point to the new descriptor. Okay, uh, of course, uh, in order to uh, satisfy log freedom, uh, we have helping a helping mechanism in place uh, similar to existing algorithms. So if a read or an MCAS operation encounters a, a descriptor that has a, an, an ongoing status, uh, that operation will first help this descriptor finalize and then will proceed as I had described before. A second characteristic of our algorithm is related to the unlocking phase. So like I said, the unlocking phase is now off the critical path and done in the background. And we choose to perform the unlocking phase as part of memory reclamation. So now memory reclamation does phases three and four. It starts by waiting until no thread is trying to help this operation anymore. And once that is the case, it detaches uh, the descriptor from all the addresses and installs final values in the addresses, much as I have described for previous work. After that is done, the memory reclamation scheme waits until no thread has references to the descriptor. And once that is the case, the memory of the descriptor can be safely reclaimed. Okay, this is at the high level our, the behavior of our algorithm. You might be wondering what benefits there are to this approach. So the first and most obvious benefit is that by removing the unlocking phase off the critical path, we have reduced the complexity of the critical path. And this is what we set out to do in the first place. A second, perhaps less obvious um, benefit is that taking the unlocking phase to the background and, and doing it as part of memory reclamation creates an opportunity to amortize the work of unlocking. To see that, consider this example. Let's consider A1 again, and let's assume that A1 was used by several uh, MCAS operations during a single memory reclamation cycle. So let's say, so in this case, A1 first pointed to this descriptor and then some other descriptor came and swung that pointer to a second descriptor and then a third descriptor and so on. Now it's time to do memory reclamation. So the memory reclamation scheme only needs to detach A1 from the last descriptor it points to. So the work of unlocking has been now amortized across several operations. And of course, this can happen for any and potentially all of these addresses. A, th a third benefit of our approach, which is also less obvious, is related to ABA prevention. So all MCAS algorithms need to uh, take care of the ABA problem. And most of these algorithms do so in the locking phase. So they have extra complexity in place in the locking phase in order to, to guard against the ABA problem. Um, however, in our al algorithm, we, we allow a memory reclamation scheme to take care of the unlocking phase. And memory reclamation schemes need to guard against the, the ABA problem in, in all cases. Therefore, we can uh, benefit from this uh, opportunity and allow the memory reclamation scheme to take care of ABA prevention. And this means that we don't need to perform ABA prevention in the locking phase anymore. So this further allows us to reduce the complexity of the, lock, of the locking phase. Okay, so these three benefits taken together mean that we have less complexity on the critical path. And this allows us to have the K plus one complexity that I mentioned. And it means that there are opportunities to amortize the work of the critical path. Now, how does this translate to practice? So I would like for the final part of the talk, I would like to show you uh, one slide with a brief glimpse at our evaluation results. So we implemented our algorithm and we used it uh, to, as part of two data structures that are based on MCAS. So we used it as part of a double linked list implementation and a B3 implementation. And we compare it against the state of the art MCAS algorithm as a baseline. Here are the results. Um, so you can see our algorithm in blue and the baseline in orange. 
uh, the y-axis show throughput and the x-axis show the number of threads. And uh, of course, higher is better in, the, in these graphs. So as you can see, uh, there's a significant performance improvement with our algorithm. And this is due to the uh, lower complexity on the critical path and to the potential for amortization of the critical path, as I have mentioned. So uh, this uh, evaluation slide confirms that, confirms the intuition that having lower complexity translates to better performance in practice. Next brings me to the conclusion of my talk. Hopefully in this presentation today, I have given you the intuition behind our efficient MCAS algorithm for uh, volatile memory. Our algorithm uses K plus one cases for a K word MCAS in the common uncontended case. It also has the desirable property that readers do not write to shared memory when there is no contention. We have two other contributions, an MCAS algorithm for persistent memory, which is also very efficient, and the lower bound on MCAS complexity, which shows that our algorithms are nearly optimal. For these two last contributions, I invite you to check out our paper. Thank you very much for your attention.